Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Open at Belton, presented by Discraft here at Heritage Park in Texas. This is our first Disc Golf Pro Tour stop in the Silver Series of the year. And a big thanks to all of you, as well as a special shout out to our Patreon supporters helping make this all possible. My name is Dustin Murray, and I'll be bringing you all of the coverage here. I am a esports commentator that's getting into disc golf, and I'm enjoying every moment. And thanks for having me, Gatekeeper, as we jump into the start of our first round. This is the feature card we're going to be looking at for the day over here at Gatekeeper Media. Definitely some familiar faces with Bradley Williams, Chris Dickerson, Ezra Aderhold, and also Michael Infante coming in. Also take a look at our DGPT standing so far this year. Luke Humphrey certainly topping the charge, been the breakout player of the year, but definitely a lot of solid players trailing just behind him. As we head into hole one, it's a 388 foot par three. You'll either see players going up the gut or the big spike hyzer out to the right, but there was a strong left to right wind challenging our players today. So we got Michael Infante coming up first. He's been playing in PGA events since 1997, been a pro since 2002. So cool to see him out here today. See, he throws a nice shot up the gut, landing just inside circle one. Now we have Bradley Williams out of Austin, Texas. Always a strong name on the list of events in the area. Had some fantastic performances last year at Waco, as well as GMC, Ledgestone, and USDGC. So always a threat on the podium. Chooses to go up the gut as well. And nestles it in there nicely. Well done there from Bradley Williams. And now, of course, we have Chris Dickerson heading into the year, newly sponsored by Discraft. Came to this event with a 12th place finish at the Las Vegas Challenge and 5th at Waco. Very strong 2021 with top fives at Worlds and USDGC. We see him going for the Spike Heiser route to break apart from the pattern. And wow, that is a bull's eye landing there to kick off the round for Dickerson. And of course, we got Ezra Aderhold out here, our 2020 belt and champion. It's kind of how we broke out, really. Gonna see him go for the Spike Heiser shot as well. Lands just a bit inside and just into circle two. So a lengthy putt ahead of him. And again, windy conditions were a huge factor throughout our first day here. As we see Ezra lining up for the step putt. Oh my goodness, what a way to kick off the round for Ezra. Let's rewind that back. Just see him catching that left side and nestling into the basket, and that's a great way to kick off your tournament. Big putt. That'll get the confidence flowing. So now we get up to Michael Infante. Let's see if he can kick things off. Ah, a little high on that one. Obviously putting straight into the headwind. We'll see if he can step up and at least salvage the par here, but definitely a lengthy one ahead of him. Now putting with the tailwind. And nicely done. Getting the par with a strong putt. Again, normally see him playing a lot of the Masters events, but cool to have him out on our feature card here today. As we see Bradley Williams step up and nestles it in there as well for birdie. And now Dickerson just has to make sure he doesn't hit his head on the way down to picking up his disc as he absolutely parked this shot. In these windy conditions, you love to have a stress-free birdie. So a great start here for our card. As we now head into our second hole, it is going to be a 492 foot par four. Pretty straightforward, just need to get through that first gap, but then you have a steep slope that can make the approach a bit tricky and a bit of a blind shot, though there is a tall flag that kind of helps our players keep tabs on the basket. We'll see Bradley Williams taking charge here. Looks a little low out of the hand, but able to get some good skips forward and 
Just to leave him a chance to approach for birdie. Dickerson up next. Looks to be a little bit better height on this one and getting some great skips forward and really sending it down the fairway. That is going to be an ideal spot for him. As Raider hold up next. Also making the gap and getting some favorable skips forward. And so far, our CTP is right there. Pretty much a putt approach to get to the basket for birdie. Let's see what Michael Infante can do here. A little low and a little turned over, but able to stay center cut and still has a chance. So we'll see him step up first for the second shot. A little bit turned over on this second shot and kind of right there on the edge of the wood line. Going to be tricky. See Bradley step up. A little standstill turnover. Fading out maybe a little earlier than he had hoped, but looks like he still slides down in the circle one, so still has a look for Bird. Dickerson just a light toss to nestle under the basket and Secures himself what should be another birdie. See Michael here with a little bit of a challenging approach, but able to pitch down there and looks like he'll salvage the par. As we can see, Ezra is right there, actually able to look at the basket. So a very simple putt approach for him to land in the bullseye and a stress-free birdie. A little bit of a tester here for Bradley. A little high, hits the top band. Lucky to nestle right next to the basket and not have a roll down. So we'll at least be able to pick up the par as we see our players tap in here. A couple of birdies to kick off the round for both. Ezra Aderhold at Dickerson. Bradley Williams securing the par along with Michael Infante. Now we're going to head into hole three, 309 feet, par three. The Mando prevents the high hyzer and therefore forces you to take on this tricky downhill fairway with lots of tree kick threats in the water left. Definitely a very tough hole to navigate as uh, these forehands are typically the popular option. Dickerson going with the flex here to kick things off, just trying to filter through, and that he does well within circle one. So Dickerson off to a great start here. We see Ezra Aderhold lining up a similar shot. A little low, gets some skips, needs to be careful. And that's going to be out of bounds. Very unfortunate. Let's see Bradley here, see if he can get through. Looks smooth out the hand. A little bit of a tree kick, but Nessa's onto the road, which is inbound, so still has his stance to approach for the par. Pretty smooth shot here from Michael Infante. Can it roll all the way down? Gets caught up on a tree, but still inbounds. So we will see Bradley pitching up for the par. Drop zone here for Aderhold. Pin seeking, but not the height, so we'll have to settle for the bogey here as Dickerson looks for Bird. And a little high, but still able to fit it in there, so a turkey to kick off the round for Dickerson. He had a fifth place at Waco. Was very much in the running for the win there for quite a while. So definitely looking to capitalize on a little bit of momentum. See Michael Infante here with a very tricky downhill putt for par. You can see he's obstructed, trying to straddle out. Uh, a little high, a little left as well, I believe. So 
So we'll see him strut down the stairs and look to at least knock a par out here. And no problem. Keeps the card clean through the first three holes, despite a couple of challenges thrown his way. Now we'll see Bradley Williams come on down to follow suit with his own par. No problem for Bradley Williams. So we'll see Ader hold drop in for a par as well. Or excuse me, that is a bogey. So we now jump into hole number four, 445, par four, tight tunnel tee shot. Just need to try to get through that fence and stay in bounds, and then you have to approach this tricky turtle back green. Because that's kind of one of the main features of this course here at Heritage Park is these very unique greens that and certainly throw a wrench in things as we see a smooth tee shot here from Dickerson, perfectly straight out into the open. That's what you want to accomplish on the tee of this hole. And Bradley Williams, oh, bounces off the left side, rolls right, but I believe he still should have a look at the approach of the basket. Michael Infante, that looks a little turned over. Needs that to kind of bounce out left or cut roll, but kind of gets stuck there. But I believe he may still have a chance to get out on his second shot. As we're going for the forehand. Gets a nice tree kick and leaves him at the gate. And yeah, this is a tricky little turnover for Michael. But that looks so well executed. Lands on the green. Well done. That was a tough shot. Bradley with something similar, but a little more of a look at the basket. Also a nice little gentle turnover that lands just below the basket there. So a little bit of a tricky uphill putt for birdie for him. As Ezra will skip up a forehand, gets a pretty nasty little roll, but at least cuts back into circle one. So you have Dickerson with the best look of the card to get up there stress-free. And he'll bounce it up there nicely. So Dickerson is on fire right now, looking to go four for four to kick off our front nine. Everyone has a chance at birdie on this hole. Oh, just a little high, but does sit down up there. Definitely always a threat of a roll down on this basket. As we see Bradley Williams taking the birdie. Dickerson up next to keep the birdie fest rolling. And he'll get it done. Lots of birdies on the day on this hole. Shout out though to Ben Calloway who got the only eagle on the day. Just played slightly under par, kind of more towards the easier side as far as difficulty goes. Most people just see a disc. At Discraft, we see over 40 years of innovation driven by passion consistency that inspires talent built on a foundation designed for success over four decades of experience behind your first throw all right welcome back to the coverage here as we get to hole five a 788 foot par four a fairly wide open hole but with these wins and the ob right Things can get a little bit tricky, and we also have another unique elevated green. 
with uh, a little bit of a set of poles standing guard on the front side. I've heard it called mozzarella sticks or eyelashes, so I guess just whatever floats your boat. So we see Dickerson step up first, throwing a solid shot out to the right-hand side. It's a couple of nice forward skips as well, so he's looking to keep this hot round flowing. We see Bradley Williams up next. Leaks this one right, needs that one to get back in bounds, and no, he will not get the flare he requires, and it's going to put a hurdle out in front of him here. Michael Infante may be risking something similar, but it stays low enough, and so it will stay in the fairway, keeping him in bounds, as we see Ezra now taking the tee. Nice pushing Heiser out of the hand, avoids any obstructions. And here we see Bradley Williams from his OB, still trying to approach the green and salvage par on this par four. Booms it down there, but outside of circle two, so very likely just pitching up and taking a bogey. See Michael Infante up next on the right side as well. Definitely a lot more open on this side of the fairway, but just risky with the OB. Well done there from Michael, as we see Ezra now. Looking to approach the green. Looking for the big skip out wide, and it fits through onto the mound, and that is really well executed there from Ezra Adahol. Give him a great chance at birdie. He's had a couple of struggles the last couple of holes, looking to get back right. As again, Dickerson's just trying to keep his momentum rolling, and... This is going to be a bit of a tester. Try to keep the birdies going for him. Little low skip shot here from Michael and avoids the eyelashes and puts himself in close range of the basket. Ah, and unfortunately for... Williams, he catches one of those, so it makes his putt a little bit trickier. This is Dickerson to keep the birdies going. And man, he is just on one today. Five in a row for Dickerson. Looking to make a strong bid for the top of the leaderboard here on our first day at the Open at Belton. So this hole played slightly over par, 0.25 strokes over sixth in difficulty on the day. Definitely provided some challenges for the field. Uphill and strong winds here for Bradley and obstructions in front of him, taking his time. And gets it done. So after the OB at least able to escape with the bogey. Now we see if Ezra Aderhole can get back to scoring after a couple of tough holes. A little bit of tricky footing. And this time he connects, so good birdie there for Ezra. Still having a pretty solid round here at two under. And we'll see Michael tap in the par. This brings us to hole number six, a 403-foot par three. Very interesting green, as many of our holes have been so far. Usually going to see players go out left that it is more open, but certainly you could attack the center gap if you want to shave how much distance you have to cover off the tee. That's exactly what Dickerson's looking to do, and oh, catches the tree on the left side. And it looks like the uh, birdie train may be coming to a stop. So this is a very common play for our right-handed players. It's the out-left forehand here in Ezra. I know that the forehand was something he worked on quite a lot this offseason. 
And it certainly shows there, though he's still maybe just outside circle one. Michael Infante going for the turnover out left side. A little low out the hand, but certainly still going to allow him to sit up for the par. And that is very low out of Bradley Williams' hand. And that is not going to make much progress, making his approach for par a lot more tricky. Same here with Dickerson, of course. But that is really well done. Thank you. Wow. An absolute park chop from Dickerson. And while it won't be a birdie, it will be a stress-free par, and he will continue climbing the leaderboard. Left to right wins going to keep that disc out right, but able to nestle in towards circle one. So Bradley will have a chance to get the par going. Oh, Michael Infante playing off the, the ramp there, but gets a nasty roll. It's just near the edge of circle one there. And here's Ezra looking for that step putt. Ah, a little low. Looks like there won't be any scoring going on in this hole here for the card. Again, very tricky with the wins out today. A little low out of Bradley's hand, and so that might be back-to-back -back bogeys coming up here for him. Also a little low. Looks like that was a headwind putt that Michael was thinking might lift, but. So we'll see Bradley come over. Is not much work left to be done here on hole six for our card. Is most will be escaping with pars, but I believe Bradley is facing bogey here after couple of tough moments. As we watch our players tap in, let me know in the comments below what is your trusty headwind disc. We're facing a lot of wins out here today at Belton. I'm curious for you folks out there, what, what disc do you go to when there's a raging headwind in front of you? What do you trust the most? Let me know down below. See our players tap in, lick their wounds a bit. A couple of bogeys for Michael and Bradley, but pars for the others. As we get into hole seven, a 476 foot par three. This requires a huge hyzer to get inside of circle one. And with the winds, it is just so hard to get distance you need to get yourself in close putting range. You see Dickerson up first here. Puts that one on the right line. Just needs some good skips. And he will get them. Wow, that is really well executed from Dickerson considering the weather conditions. So he looks to get right back to scoring after the par on hole six. Certainly no Ezra Aderholt has the power to get there. As the bean powered gentleman parks the basket. Really well done. Fonte also gets a good shot here and some good skips. Just outside circle two, it appears. And so Bradley Williams, after a couple of struggles, looking to get back on track. Also gets some favorable skips just outside of circle one, so not too shabby. We'll see just a little bit of a layup there for Michael Infante to walk away with the par. No shame in that. A little low out of Bradley Williams' hand, so a par will have to be what he settles for here. So he is going to continue on. Solid putt. Gets him out of here with a three. As, as Raiderhold and Chris Dickerson are... Right there by the bullseye. But 
this win, though, definitely requires a little bit of extra focus. But Dickerson will drop it in there to go six under par here through seven holes. Making a strong bid for a lead card for our second day. Michael Infante looks just to take the par. And that he will. And Ezra will follow suit. As we now hop into hole eight, a 488 foot par three. Used to be a par four, but has now been made even more difficult. This is a very difficult birdie. Usually gonna see some low lines just to stay in the fairway. It's very skinny, lots of danger. And if you throw a little too high, there's a lot of risk to get caught up in. So you are gonna see the big highs are coming out of Dickerson though, trying to avoid that low ceiling by going over the top of it. Does stay in bounds. So that is well done to set up for the par play. As this played as the second most difficult hole on the day, 0.56 over par. So just to illustrate how tough this really was, especially in these windy conditions. That needs to get back for Aider hold and stick, and it will do. So should set him up for the approach for par. There's Michael trying to go for that lower line. And he is able to fight his way through some of these branches. And stays in balance as well. So, so far, clean off the tee is our card. See if Bradley Williams can continue that. So he also takes that lower line. And that's carrying a little left. Could find the OB, but is able to settle down in time. So... Our card is set up well to walk out of here with those pars. Almost looked like a little bit of a bit there for Michael and Bonte, but gets it up there. Might have a bit of a tester though for his par putt. Nice touch there from Bradley Williams, puts him in the bullseye. Just a step put approach here for Aderhold after a big tee shot. And he'll nestle up there as well for what should be a stress-free par. And Dickerson quick to follow suit. As it's worth noting that on this day, there was not a single birdie in MPO. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the only birdie period was one from Cynthia Ricciotti. And in fact, that was an eagle as it played as a par four. So she was the only two on the day. So shout out to her. So we'll see if Michael Infante can make this tester work. As he will get the bogey. Rest of our players should be able just to simply tap in some routine pars. As we are getting ready to close out our front nine here. And again, Tickerson just continues to roll forward with a huge score. Really starting to create some separation here as we finish off the front half of round one. As we get into hole nine, which I feel is the signature hole of the course, just a really pretty tunnel shot. Usually for our right-handed players, you're going to see the forehand and try to skip up into the green. Definitely requires a bit of power though, 385. So we're gonna see Dickerson line up the roller. Oh my, that is perfectly done. It's a bit more of a roll up the hill than he probably wanted, though, and I think that puts him just kind of outside circle one facing a pretty dangerous downhill putt. 
looked online for most of the way, but just got a little bit more out, roll up the hill. More common forehand play coming out of Ezra Aderhold. And this is getting some nice little hoverport action just outside the bullseye, so really setting him up nicely for the uphill birdie putt. See Bradley Williams looking to do the same thing. Good height on this. And a great skip, and that is parked. Let's see what Michael Infante has for us. Will he also be looking for a roller or just a turnover? Looks like it will be the turnover play here. Just not getting enough turn, though. Fading out left. At least he does not find the OB. He gets caught up on this tree. Looking for a bit of a jump putt approach and gave it a bit of a run. Not quite getting all the way there, but sets up for the par. And this is a, again, very tricky downhill putt for Dickerson. Just outside circle one. Doesn't even really want to mess with it. Gives it a bit of a softer bid. But should not have too much trouble getting the par here. And he... Indeed will, and while well, he misses out on this one, and he probably wanted it, still a very good score at six under par to our front nine. Had such a great start. I believe he was five for five on the first five holes. As we see another birdie there from Aderhold, climbing back, four under, so a very good round for Aderhold as well. And a couple of hiccups, buddy. Got this composure and wound up doing good work. So it's a great birdie as well for Bradley Williams. And now Michael Infante will look to tap in his par. And that'll do it here for us on the front nine of our first round. If you take a look at our results here, yeah, Dickerson, such a hot start in strong as well. Six under, Ezra Aderhold not too far behind at four under. And Bradley caught a couple of tough breaks there, but still in contention. As you can see, yeah, Dickerson is leading. Heading into our back nine. Thank you so much for tuning in over here at Gatekeeper Media. Be sure to follow and subscribe. Also, of course, a special shout out to all of our Patreon supporters who help make all of this possible. Again, I am Dustin Murray, and I had a fantastic time bringing you the coverage. If you want, you can give me a follow up on Twitter and Instagram. It's just follow Dust. Also, I'm Dustin Disc on YouTube. And uh, yeah, just thanks so much having me on board, Gatekeeper Media, and we will see you on the back nine.